Right, in this video, we'll go over um, how to find the value of the product name and correlation coefficient. So, um, in correlation, you will be given values of x and y. Um, could, but these values are called bivariate data. It could be the, say, maths test result and the physics test result. Bivariate is two pieces of, of information that can vary from one person to another, and this could be from person one. In person 2, you might get uh, 34 in math testing, 42 in physics test. And we can have um, maybe as many bits of data as we like, but typically in questions that don't go too far. Um, so let's say we have um, 10 bits of data, the last bit being say, 91 and 75. Now, the calculation of the correlation, uh, the product and the correlation coefficient requires a fairly lengthy formula. And to begin with, it looks fairly easy. It's simply r equals the coefficient of the sum of xy and the sum of xx and the sum of y. But these component parts are quite um, pretty complicated. So we start with uh, sx1. You are given all these formulas, um, but if you know them, you will be there. So sum of xy minus sum of x times sum of y equals m. Now, if I know that one, it's very easy to get the next one. I'm simply going to replace the x and the y with the x and this. So I don't bring x, y, or the x, x, which of course is x squared. And then we'd have sum of x times sum of x, would be sum of x all squared. Remember that is very different from sum of x squared. And finally, we'll have sum of y, y, so simply replace the x's with y's. And those are component parts. Now, what we may be required to do is to work out the values of x squared, y squared, and x y. So, just so you're absolutely sure what that means, that's going to be 78 squared, 25 squared, and this will be 78 times 25. And we really are required to do that, but if the table was um, just values of x and y, then you'd have to work more out, and then you'd have to work out the uh, uh, additions of each column. So the uh, addition of the x column would be the sum of x, addition of the y column, sum of y, and you've got the other time of x squared by the third column, fourth column, sum of y squared, and fifth column, sum of x, y. And now you have all the parts um, of the formula um, that you need. Well, now, let's um, move on down. We could write the formula down. Well, well, I quite like doing it this way. I'll tell you why now. As the sum of xy minus the sum of x, sum of y, all over a, all over the square root of. And it, will be, it doesn't actually matter which way around you put these, but sum of x squared minus sum of x, all squared, all over a, in brackets, times. Sum of y squared minus sum of y in brackets all squared over n. Now, in that form, you shouldn't see any number repeating itself anywhere. Right? Each that number is um, unique unless there's some remarkable sort of coincidence in the question where sum of y squared and sum of x squared, but highly unlikely. So, what you will see the n appear in three places. So, if you put it all in like that, you can do a quick double check that you pick the correct um, numbers here. Well, let's just try and say make a few up and say that that was uh, 1,020, and that was 78, and that was 25,000, and that was, um, let's say, something squared, um, 4,000, and say that was 17,000. So all we have to do then is put these component parts into that formula and work out the rest with a calculator. So I'll show you how to do that then. So sum of x, y, so we've got 17,000 minus, yep, right, yep, 17,000, minus sum, sum of x times sum, oh, sorry, sum of x times sum of y, so that's 1020 times 78, divided by 10, now the reason it's 10 is although I've got three pairs, I've done some dots here, and I've sort of already been, uh, I'm sort of saying, but imagine you have 10 pairs of data, okay, so that's why I've only 10 there. So, and then, going back, over the square root of, so we now have the sum of x squared, 25,000, minus the 
sum of x all squared, 1020 squared over 10. We work that out in brackets. Then we go to the sum of y squared, which is 4,000, so the sum of y squared, 4,000 minus the sum of y, 78, all squared over 10. So you'll see then that the numbers there, there, and there are all different. And you get your 102 over there, the 78 there, and it repeats itself there. So in fact, something I said earlier wasn't quite, quite true. 102 always can appear twice, um, and so is your 78. So look out for that. And now, really, the rest of this work is understanding exactly how your calculator works. Now, in practice, from your textbook, you get lots of questions, and you should be able to establish exactly how to do this. That will give you R. Finally, um, in terms of interpreting R, if r is approximately 0, what I mean by that is say r is between 0 0.3 and minus 0 0.3, then there's very little or no correlation. If you said very little or no correlation, I think you'd be probably right to say that. And generally with the small values, if they want you to see correlation, you're going to have r greater than 0 0.7 or r less than minus 0 0.7. And you would say we've got either positive correlation here, or negative correlation there. So this is product moment correlation coefficient. Um, this is your summary data. Here are your key formulas and they are given to you in the form of it. It's a really good idea if you know them you can write them down very quickly. That's your formula um, for the product moment correlation coefficient. That's me showing you some examples of substitutions. And again remember that that does it occur twice, so does the 78, but these numbers here, here, and here and appear um, once, and the 10 appears three times. And hopefully, that's a good reminder of what you've already been told in your lessons.